One of the best things about cheap, shitty products from eBay is you can have lots of fun trying to work out what's inside them before you open them up to see what actually is inside them. So this one uh, is, well, this one costs £1.79, but I see there's a listing down here, £1.59. It's described rather inappropriately as AAAAA lithium ion rechargeable battery USB 4 slot intelligent charger. It's not for lithium ion cells, it's uh, for nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium cells. In fact, in the back it says the output is 1.2 volts at roughly 250 milliamps. Um, so this one came from a seller, Shen Chaya Zen 3, and yeah, let's get into it. So the first uh, thing I did was I plugged it in. Now let's do that. Let's uh, get the bench power supply in so we can monitor this. Uh, and I'll connect this test USB lead up. So I shall put the black on here. And I shall get a cheapy meter with clips. And this can go in the red, the black can go to there. And we'll set this to about, uh, let's set it to 10 amps, because it should be hopefully quite a modest amount of current. Okie dokie. So uh, sticking a cell into this, once I've plugged it in, that, that would really help. Sticking a cell into it, uh, it doesn't make a very good connection. It's drawing about 190 milliamps for that position. Two cells, it goes up to 300 milliamps, which you'd have thought it would kind of double. Uh, it goes up a bit, but not an awful lot when you put one in the LED doesn't light. These are all promising things. Ugh. 460 milliamps for four cells. And if you wiggle this LED here, yep, if you wiggle it backwards and forwards, it goes on and off. When it's off, the current consumption is about 475 milliamps. And when it's on, it goes up to about 482. So that's uh, the LED is about five or, or so milliamps uh, when it's when it's connected. We can tell that from just looking at the way the current fluctuates. I'm looking at the high resolution current reading on the bench power supply as opposed to this. Um, just to prove that in fact, uh, and the current will vary quite dramatically. If I then switch this back down to uh, let's see if it's even going to work. Is it going to show? Is it going to be out of range? It's about 137 milliamps, but with the LED on when I wiggle it, oh, it's quite jumped up quite a lot. That is really jumped up, hasn't it? So 140, 100 and... So about 20 milliamps? Over 20 milliamps. Oh, right, okay. That's extremely variable. Another thing, the double A cells, you put a double A cell in, it's like really tight uh, and fine, it does charge once you give it a wiggle to make contact. But then getting it out again, depending on the position you put it in, some of them are so tight that it's actually really hard to get it back out again. But anyway, that's what you get for your money. So let's uh, disconnect this now and do some other tests while we deduce what's inside. Initially, I shall do a quick doodle of what uh, would be ideally inside for a simple charger like this. So ideally, each channel would have, say, the plus 5 volt rail, plus 5 volts, 0 volts. It would ideally have a diode for to prevent it some back discharge back into the whatever USB device was powering it, because they often have a resistor across the rails. Then it would have the main resistor that limits the current to the cell. And there's the cell with the terminals. Then for the LED, you'd quite often have another resistor and the LED just across that to allow some current that, so that the LED current will actually go, go to charging this as well. And if we look at the readings, which I've just forgotten, was that about 130 milliamps or so? Um, so in, in this type of circuit, we'd be dropping, say, about 0 0.6 volts across that uh, diode. We'd be dropping at fully charged at about 1.5 volts. So uh, that would add up to about 2 volts. You'd be dropping about 3 volts across this uh, array here. And this would then be divided as in, like, 2 volts across the red LED and then 1 volt across that resistor. So from that, we can get a very rough volume. 
Um, with a single cell, it was round about, it was it about 250 milliamps? Let's bring in the big calculator. So R equals uh, V over I, which would be the 3 volts being dropped divided by the 250 milliamps, equals round about 12 ohms. Is that viable? Uh, 12 ohms. And the... Um, Across this, the resistor in series, the LED, is going to see one volt at, we reckoned it was about, it was about 20 milliamps, between 10 and 20 milliamps. So let's say um, R equals V over I, 1 divided by the, let's go for an average value, 0 0.015 equals about 66 ohms. That's just wild guesses, it's probably nothing like that, because the voltage and the current seems to yo-yo up and down, uh, depending on how many cells are connected. Uh, another thing I can do here, actually, let's do that. Let's check for diodes between these. Uh, if there are diodes, there shouldn't be any current. Uh, if these, we'll check for if these are common first. That's common. All these are common. These should not show. These are showing leakage between them, so it might be one diode does all the circuits. Actually, you know what? Is there a diode at all? That would be between here and uh, there's no diode. What about another lead? No. no uh, let's just scrub the diode, shall we? Oh, that's screwed all the figures. Not to worry. Let's open it then and find out what's in the side and what the circuitry is. Right now, I'm very suspicious that the circuitry is simply the resistor, the cell, the charging point for the cell, and then the resistor and LED across that. Okay, let's open it and find out what is inside. Screwdriver. That's uh, not the right size of bit. This will work. It's a dumb charger. As long as you've got it plugged in and you've got the uh, batteries in it, it will just keep trickle charging them. The current will vary depending on whether the, the battery is completely flat or it's up to the sort of peak charging voltage, which is around about 1.5 volts. Oh. Hidden screws. Let's get that label off completely, shall we? Um, spudger to spudge the label off. Oh no, that's the warranty void. Well, that was quite a strong label. I thought I was poking right through that with the screwdriver, but it was obviously just resisting. Is it going to spring apart? Those are, it's quite common you open these little chargers with the adjustable, with the spring loaded plates that they'll just start pinging everywhere. Oh yeah. There's not a lot in this. So, what have we got here? At the risk of this all pinging out... One resistor for them all? The frickin' cheapskates! Really? Okay, one resistor going to the negative of them all, but then what about the LEDs? The positive is going, oh, that's quite odd. That is quite odd circuitry. All right, one moment, please. Oh, dear. The reason I paused there was because I couldn't actually, I thought I must not be seeing what I, th you know, it was. In reality, yes, it is. It's odd. They've got one 2.2 ohm resistor as a main limiting resistor. That's this big fat resistor down here in series the negative rail. And then in series each bat each lithium lithium, each nickel metal hydride cell, they've got a 20 ohm resistor and an LED across it. And that doesn't make sense because technically speaking, if the voltage across that is too high, if the current flowing through it uh, if, especially if you put in a cell that was fully discharged down to almost zero volts, then the current 
flowing through this, uh, as soon as it reaches about 100 milliamps, then the voltage across that resistor is going to be about 2 volts, and the LED is going to start conducting. And as the for currents over 100 milliamps, a significant portion of the current is going to be going through the LED. It's a very odd arrangement. I've just never seen that before. It's not a good arrangement. Um, the design, I the sort of doodle I did before of the... Uh, main resistor, instead of just this one resistor, having one resistor per uh, cell is such a, a better idea. It spreads the dissipation um, and also it means that the voltage across, with having a resistor and an LED in series across that, then the LED is never going to see excessive current. In these ones, it's, there's just no real limit to the current it could see. It really is a very, very strange circuit. Some of those LEDs under the circumstance of a fresh freshly discharged cell just put into that, the current could be quite massive through the LED. Very odd, very strange, very shitty. But then again, what do you expect for the price? It is indeed living up to the expectations of being a rather shitty product.